2012, January 3rd, 2013, and January 15th, uh, 2013, regular county commission meetings. Item B, uh, during the last meeting on January 15th, 2013, the budget amendment that was presented to the Department of Social Services was mistakenly submitted twice. Uh, this evening, we're asking to approve removing this uh, budget amendment. <coughs> Item C, the budget amendment in the health department asking budget $4,879 in state grant funds to be used in the Eat Smart Food More program. Item D, the budget amendment in the health department. Asking, sorry, I'm wrong, I'm not messing with you. I'm getting ready to repeat the same thing we did last time. Uh, asking the budget uh, $17,100 $57 in federal grant funds to be used in the Healthy Mothers and Healthy Children program. Item E, the budget amendment in the health department, asking the budget $115,922 in state grant funds to be used for operating expenses in the diabetes community health program. Item F, the budget amendment in the health department, asking the budget $12,791 in federal grant funds to be used and a contract with Alliance for Health to carry out the Enhancing Local Asthma Efforts Program. Item G, the Budget Amendment and Health Department, asking the budget $405 in local grant funds to be used for a student preceptor program. Item H, for the deed of easement between Cleveland County and the City of Shelby. Uh, several years ago, the county granted a 45-day <coughs> easement to the city for access to their water tower on Plato Lee Road. Uh, this deed um, tonight further clarifies that the easement includes the location and maintenance of uh, the underground water line that was not specified in the previous easement. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Commission, you've heard the consent agenda by the county manager at this time. Do I have a motion to approve? Take a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second.
state championship. We thought that had a huge economic impact. So our sporting events have brought quite a bit of money to our county this year. We're making a huge effort to continue to recruit those events. With the expansion of the city park, we're able to offer a lot more than we have in the past. So we're really working on that. We also, our River Mush Expo was adopted by the state. It's now the official North Carolina River Mush Festival. So that is the new name and it's hosted in Shelby. Uh, it will be October 19th. We had 8,000 people attend the year before last. Last year we had 10,000 people attend. So we have requested even more street closers this year because the festival just keeps out growing up here on Shelby and we just keep growing down the street. And I'm very thankful that the city of Shelby allows us to still have it there. Uh, we are attracting more conferences and trade shows, not just with the LeGrand Center. Of course, that's a big part of trying to get more of events and more group travel here. But also for our smaller venues, we've hosted quite a few small uh, events and conferences and trade shows. We've gone Gibson's been a great venue for that. Uh, we've also hosted some at the fairgrounds and uh, some very smaller places. So we're working really hard to try to attract those people to town as well. They fill up our hotels, they eat in our restaurants. And uh, we're also going to be hosting a lot more of those this year. We're getting quite a reputation and we're putting together all of that information. We have a spreadsheet that has all the information of the meeting space in our area. So we, everything from brides to gun shows, when they call, we have information for them about what is available and where they might want to meet. We did accomplish national media attention. Of course, uh, American Legion World Series brings national media attention to us. But we've also received national media attention through the tours that we've been conducting. The Hunger Game tours uh, have led to national media all the way to, well, international media, actually. We've got quite a few blogs going on about <laughs> Hunger Games tours in North Carolina. We've led over a dozen tours and continue to lead those tours. So hosting that movie here not only brought the economic impact of having the movie shot here, but we're still continuing to be the benefits of that as people travel to our area. We did host a, the American Bus Tour on uh, January 12th. They got kind of a sneak preview of what the Earl's Drug Center is going to be. And we took them on the Hunger Games Tour, and we made them eat liver mush. And they were well, like, oh, we didn't. But they did have the liver mush experience. Um, hotel occupancy is up 11% countywide. We're very, very proud of that. We also rank number eight in the state for visitor spending increase. And out of 100 counties, for our little county with no additional hotel rooms, to have that kind of increase was huge. So our next big step is trying to attract more hotel rooms. And as you all know, we are moving and trying desperately to, uh, to get that. And I think that's looking very good. I really expect new hotels within the next 12 days and months. What we're working on now, if you haven't seen the new visitor's guide, I do have those available, but we do have our new Music Much and More visitor's guide available. Uh, with the Don Gibson bringing award-winning artists to Cleveland County and the Earl Scruggs Center opening soon, our area is really set to be a true music area. You're noticing a lot more live music in the restaurants uptown. You're going to see a lot more live music around Smith Mountain, down their outdoor venues. A lot more live music on the street in Shelby, uh, a lot more at the city park. We're doing a lot more with live music. I know the American Legion World Series concert bringing a lot of people to town, and the Clear Mountain View Music Festival, and the things that are at the farm at Carl Palmer. Uh, the Clear Mountain View Music Festival this year is going to do a tribute to the late Earl Scruggs with 20 banjos playing uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. So we're working to try to promote the area as a music venue and we're really really getting a lot of help from our local artists they're helping to work with each other and promote each other when they travel to other places and play they talk about being from Cleveland County they talk about being from this area and um, they talk about Don Gibson being here and the Lost Roads being here so they're promoting outside and we've been meeting with our local artists and our regional artists to try to conglomerate that and work together and they're excited about doing that so they're really helpful. Um, our annual liver mush festival continues to bring media attention. If anybody saw the mention of liver mush on the Rachel Ray show recently, 
we were hoping to get Rachel Rainey home. We don't know that she would, but she has been invited and she is getting some liver lunch delivered to her. Uh, we are working, like I said, to attract more sporting events to the area and we are continuing to develop our attraction and package our events. We were working really hard to conglomerate what we have. Cleveland County's always been excellent about doing that and working together. There's two things that I've never had to work very hard at here. One is hospitality, because people are just naturally hospitable here. They're naturally friendly. The other thing I don't have to work really hard is getting people to work together. And we really have got a great group of people that work together to promote each other's venues. And we meet uh, with the travel industry committee meetings once every month. And those are people who have an interest in tourism in the area. And we usually have a representative from the hotel industry, the restaurant industry. Uh, of course, Charlie Waltz Clark from the city park is, is my vision chair, so he's always up there for me. You have know, Calvin from the city, um, from the county fairgrounds. So we try to have all of those entities meet on a monthly basis to talk about what's going on and what works together. The other things that we're doing um, as a chamber and in conglomeration with the chamber and uh, through the tourism division is we're researching some software to do a centralized calendar of events. If you go to tourcleaveroncounty.com right now, our calendar of events is basically a spread, it's just a document that you download. You kind of have to sort through that to find out it's a little bit difficult to work with. So we're researching software that'll put that in a much more friendly atmosphere. It'll look like a calendar so that people will pick out the dates that they're going to be here and they can see what's going on. They'll also be color coded, all the art events, all the music events. So we're working on some software that will do that. We're also researching ways to develop a Cleveland County Welcome discount card. All the nonprofits in the area tend to go to local businesses and ask for discounts when they have a sporting group come in or they have a conference or they're having a group. We'd like to conglomerate that and have all the businesses participate in one printed piece of material that we can give to the nonprofits and the groups that come in that offer those discounts. And that way you don't have to all go at the same time and ask for things and it's a it's a joint effort. Those won't just be given out to the general public. They'll be safe to give out to groups that come through. We're also researching a countywide gift cards. Uh, for instance, if you go to the mall you can buy gift cards. This can be used in every store in the mall. We're working on that similar project, a gift card that can be used anywhere in Cleveland County for businesses who want to participate. They will uh, pay a membership to help us pay the cost of having those cards printed, but they'll be given a code and when they swipe that card, that money will come out of the account and into their account. And basically the tourism division and the chamber will be the bank for that and have an account set up just for that. But that way they can buy tickets if you're going to get to the theater, they can use it at a restaurant, they can use it at a hotel, they can use it at any, any participating business in the county. Another way of having everybody work together and promote each other because we'll of course have a publication that has who is available to use that card. We're working on some regular reporting. Of course, that's a big part of my job is gathering information. Uh, we gather the occupancy tax every month. We try to gather information on who is traveling here. Uh, ticket events are really easy. We know how many people bought tickets, but other events, it's a little bit more difficult. For instance, at the Livermore Show, so we have people designated to count guests, and that's what they do. Is they'll take sections of the crowd and count them to see how many we have coming. We, um, we're working on a more centralized uh, gathering of information. Mainly we want to get some more information on restaurants to know what spending is in restaurants, how much of their business is from outside the area. We pulled the wineries and we pulled some of our local retail and it turns out that about 90% of the business for our small retail and for our wineries in particular comes from outside the county. Many of them from outside the state. So we're finding out that we have a whole lot more travel to our area for spending than we really are scattering so we're trying to look like getting more information about that. Uh, we're working with film commission, film location scouts um, are still calling. We are starting to do a little bit more in the film work. We work with Banshees this summer. Um, of course, we're still reaping benefits of the Hunger Games. Some of Homeland was filmed in Cleveland County. Uh, 
happy to do a quiet project because we try to keep quiet so that these people can come in and do their job. But we were involved in some of the filming for those projects. So we are still working with the film commission. I did supply you guys with some travel industry notes, and I'm not going to go through all of those. I'll put them in your report so you don't have to listen to me talk. But I do want you to look at your occupancy tax chart that I gave you because you can see the increase that we've had, and that's the color chart. That's this color chart that has um, how much our increase has been over the years. We have had the best year in Cleveland County in 2012. It's been unbelievable. Uh, many of our hotels are running from 5% to 100% occupancy. Uh, Jill and I met with today, could not get a hotel room in Shelby, even though the means from Shelby, because the hotels have been on the full, and they tried several. So not only are our occupancy rates going up, but our actual daily average rate is going up. The hotel call rates are rates, and we want that. We want them to get up because we have been significantly lower than our surrounding counties, which you would think would bring us more business, but there's no reason for us to lower our rates that low when we're getting this kind of business. So most of our hotels have gone up at least $10, and some have gone up more, so that increases our revenue even more. And we also have some hotels that have now been inspired to upgrade. So some of our hotels that really needed to upgrade are in the process of doing that. So, and that was a definite positive of this. So that's pretty much my update in a nutshell on what we've been working on. Um, did want to let you guys see, because this is brand new, and just, we just got these this week. This was our ad in the State Visitor's Guide. And we only have a few of those, and I think Jim did put some down in your um, visitor's box. But <coughs> that's the ad that we ran, and the county did help us sponsor that, so we appreciate the sponsorship and helping us get that in there. But each individual uh, ad also has been paid a portion of it. So we are in the state visitor's box. Any questions? Well, first, Jackie. Because you're one of those individuals that uh, is making a success. Uh, I think that uh, our county is benefiting from being in travel tourism. Thank you. Jackie, I just also want to thank you for what you do. Um, I think that it's very important that we continue to have a new travel or tourism and keep it growing in our county. As you can tell, it's with us happy and you know, with all the new things that we have going on with the new guys go out and sell and the ads in the magazines and I look forward to the success of the year and this year look forward. Thank you. Well, it was fun job. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the flooded? I didn't get the flooded. Just uh, the comment, you know, that echoes, uh, thank you for all of you. It really makes a difference when you have somebody out there working. I'd like to say too, thank you for what you're doing. You uh, definitely are a good face for our county as far as travel and tourism and, and trying to bring here, uh, bring people here. And um, I had the opportunity to spend a couple of days in uh, Asheville over the weekend. Um, and uh, while I was there, you and I talked uh, before about possibly a TV channel or some kind of something that would promote uh, Cleveland. So I was thinking about that when we were up there. And, I'd like the opportunity to talk a little bit more about that. I'd just like to thank you too, Jackie. I think uh, you're, a, you're a perfect example of Commissioner philosophy of travel tourism being an arm in economic development. I think it was six or seven years ago, something like that. Uh, in the fall, uh, when you know, we decided to become a more aggressive player in travel tourism. Doing a great job helping us in the areas. Uh, now we're going to get you close to deal on the budget. I'm working on it. <laughs> and, uh, Michael Creshawn is here from Chambers. I think you have any comments you'd like to make? Uh, do you have any? <laughs> 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 no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thank you for being here, Mike. I, I, I,
think you all have covered it pretty well. Jackie definitely enjoys what she's doing, and she's very, very good at it. We certainly do appreciate your support of the commissioners and, uh, and realizing that uh, travel is economic development tied, and it's not rolling tied either, it's tied. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Commissioner. Jackie, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, some of you came in just a minute ago. You want to recognize her? She doesn't She she is one of mine, uh, and she's also working on her her citizen badge and her bronze medal. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.
for the local share map to it represents anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of all of the grant funds that we operate with and that total or maximum amount would be $65,000 and of all of those um, unit member local governments that were on that previous map I think we have a total of 15 or 16 of them including Cleveland County or the unincorporated segment or portion of Cleveland County uh, Cleveland County share we just went with the basic per capita uh, breakdown was, would be $2,418 um, for the year and for the year yeah, that's, uh, I think it's third from the top $2,418 based on the unincorporated population for our entire MPO boundary population um, Cleveland County percentage is 3.7 percent of that population um, it is a, a small amount of money but for the areas that we have put or included or expanded into Cleveland County for we will um, we have bi-monthly meetings um, we meet six times per year we have a government board all of this details are in the proposed MOU um, we should have a voting member um, the way that the MOU is drafted is also in order to, to have a vote to be able to participate. Uh, it's a pay-to-play proposal. You don't wish to be a member of the MPO. You do not wish to have a vote. You you can opt out and, and not pay um, the annual contribution or proportional share. We have to go to each one of the jurisdictions on that chart or, or table and ask them if they wish to participate, if they wish to provide an annual contribution on a per capita or per round basis. And um, the sm four smallest communities, I think we put together, um, I guess, an MOU subcommittee, uh, which comprised members or staff members from Cleveland County and Kings Mountain. Um, and we discussed a couple of things for the smaller communities that had less than a thousand people within their jurisdictional boundaries we did not feel as though they needed to um, participate in this um, proportional or annual contributional share um, the amount the dollar amounts were so insignificant um, but at the same time we do we did or will be providing them an opportunity to participate for a minimum of five hundred dollars per year if they wish to participate and they wish to have a vote and say so on transportation planning efforts and activities within their community if they do not wish to they can just tell us so um, we'll just go on about our way um, other than that i mean i can answer any specific detailed questions that any of you may have regarding them you know what we do what we plan on doing um, but the mou is before you and that is what we are asking your participation and signature um, i definitely have one <clears throat> and i regret most commissioners with it but when we first talked about this the flushing is way out of the count okay and you and your group agreed to hold the boundary to King Mountain and the commissioner voted to let you have the ATJ. I'd like to know what came and why you came. Uh, as far as that's concerned, we, I did mention the urban clusters and you could see the colored area for King's Mountain. We are or are mandatorily required to take in the urban cluster area, which at the time, um, it does not include just yeah for king's mountain king's mountain's corporate limit boundary it's it's jurisdictional boundary is is larger than that colored area the urbanized cluster area the federal highway administration which uh, is the agency in which mpos receive all of our regulatory measures and requirements from they require us to take the u.s census data and smooth around these urban cluster areas so that as we do our planning work over the next decade we we can do so unencumbered unimpeded so that little area that that is outside of the urban cluster area of king's mountain and also down to crook grover uh, is the area that we feel that incorporates or includes 
the entire corporate limit boundary for Kings Mountain, including satellite.